Hedge funds increasing their bets on silver prices rising following the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing part three decision. My next guest runs a global silver exploration company. So how is his company going to capitalize on a market where there's increased interest in the metal? Well, let's just ask John Smith, chief executive of Silver Standard Resources. He joins me now for a CEO sit down. John, good to have you with us. Thanks for coming in. A explain a little bit about the silver market right now, because as I said, hedge funds seem to be liking silver. You're in the silver mining business. Tell me your perspective about where silver is right now in terms of price and where you think it's headed. So, Pim, um, I think silver just now has been priced. The marginal ounce of silver has been priced as an investment base. So as we've seen the turmoil within where is the U.S. economy going, where is Europe going, um, people are going to silver as a hedge against where the world economy is going. So today, silver plays in that space, and that's what's driving the marginal cost of silver and the pricing. All right, so $34, $34 an ounce right now. Yeah, yeah. about 34 today. I think right. So where do you, you think it continues to go higher? I think the reasons why it's trading where it is and the bias to the upside Absolutely, because it's trading what it is because the world economies from the US to Europe are not firing. They're not sorted. There's no outcome yet. And therefore, that's why silver will continue to do well because of that. All right. Let's talk about the company and some of your mining projects. Sure. Let's start in Argentina. Give us an update about the mine in Argentina. This is what, the largest open pit silver mine in the world? So, well, no, it's the largest primary silver mine in primary Argentina. Primary silver in Argentina. Uh, certainly. You know, we produce about 8.5 million ounces a year, 8 to about 10 million ounces. Um, done a lot of work over 2011 about getting the production process sorted out. Done a lot about selling, uh, sorting out sales contracts and really well positioned now producing quarter and quarter results out of the mine. So a large part of the work I did when I came on board in 2008 was really getting that mine stabilized and continually performing to course. We've done that and we've showed the market. So we're in a good position, cashed up balance sheet. Um, and really with a lot of projects to build, uh, it's a great position for me to be in. Yeah. Now, they obviously operate in other countries in addition to Argentina, for example, uh, Peru. Sure. Uh, talk a little bit about the challenges that you face working in each of these individual countries and how you surmount some of the issues. Yeah, Pim, there's, there's not one country that's easy to work in. You have to figure how you work as a business within that country. So Argentina has its uniqueness. But we work, we get products made, we get silver uh, concentrate produced, and we get our money out of the country. Uh, in Peru, we're trying to get a project permitted just now. It's about how you do your work with the local communities in and around the mine site. So you really have to pay attention to what matters at a local community level. If you do that right, you will succeed. If you don't, you're going to come off the rails. Tell us a little bit about capital expenditures, because you know when you talk about yes. mining companies, and I know that you've got yeah. a history, you were at BHP uh, right. Billiton. Yeah. It's always about, okay, you want to dig whatever it is out of the ground, whether it's silver or gold or copper, but it's all about, well, how much does it cost to actually get it out of the ground, and then what are you going to get once you sell it? Yeah. Tell me about capital expenditures. So capital is a large part of our business. So, for instance, we've got a mine in Mexico we're looking to build called Piteria. Um, it will be about 800 million to build this mine, but it'll get 7 to 11 million ounces per year for 20 to 30 years. So, how do you put that 800 million together? I'm... Uh, in the fortunate position, I sold a couple of assets and I've got between cash and investments about 700 million. So I can pretty much fund that project straight off our balance sheet. But we'll look at things about, you know, should we take in a partner? How do we raise the capital? What shape of capital that we use? Those are decisions that as we come through the end of this year, we'll take for getting on with the project in the future. Now, a lot of times, you know, mining for silver is part of mining for other things, right? I mean, mining for gold, mining for copper. Uh, can you explain a little bit from the perspective of Silver Standard, what else do you get out of the ground and what do you do with it? Yeah, it's true. It's silver rarely comes on its own as an element. Um, in, in Argentina, for us, it's dominantly silver and zinc that we get. So we sell a zinc concentrate to the market, into the zinc markets. And when we develop the likes of Pitaria, there's lead and there's zinc come. And they're very good metals because these polymetallics give you credits against your cost. So they're very supportive in making the whole economics of a mine work. So the, the mines that really work well 
and the mines that have more than one metal because they get supported in their cost structure and therefore make them more profitable. John, I'm sure you've noticed if you look at any kind of clothing catalog these days, you know, there's always uh, some kind of antibacterial yeah. uh, uh, apparel that is available. And that's really a result of using silver in new ways, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's, um, it's an incredible metal because it's an old metal that's been for centuries, right? But it's mostly a technology of tomorrow metal. So as you say, it's antimicrobial, antibacterial in clothing now, um, in the handrails, in all sorts of products to reduce the bacteria take. Uh, so there's a medical piece to it. And then there's the industrial piece. You know, it's the most conductive metal that there is. And as we all have smartphones and new technology and computer screens, it's a key component of that. So there's a big leverage on the industrial side to, to silver. I want to thank you very much uh, for joining us. John oh, Smith, thanks for giving us an update on the world of silver. Silver Standard Resources, always a pleasure. Thanks. Thank